Kurt. Uh, we just bought me a Weekender, a Vanagon, an 85. 85. An 85. Yeah. We've agreed to buy it. We're going to drive to East Durham, fix it up, and then drive it home. It should be pretty awesome. That sounds like an adventure. It's going to be an adventure for sure. How do we? It's kind of gross on the inside, but that's Good actually... Boy. We're going to drive about 600 miles to the Catskills in New York. And we're going to do something pretty crazy. It's going to be fun. We get all them MPGs on this journey. So we're going to put in some of the Lucas, this stuff. You put about way more than they say in. It's good for you. It makes the car run better. So we're going to run this whole bottle between these three buses and should sure, be good. We're bringing a duck with us. It's very much alive. <laughs> I'm not sure how or why we got this duck, but we're waiting on Dan. Uh, he hasn't broken down yet. So we have a duck in a harness on a leash. Are you ready? I'm ready. So here's an update. So far, we've only broken down once and Craig is under tow. So hopefully we'll figure out what's wrong with his shit. They left me. Guess I'm walking. Well, we broke down and uh, I don't know why. Uh, we gotta start doing some diagnosing. This trip here. so far is really reinforcing <laughs> that this is a good idea. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're we did make it out of Pittsburgh. We oh, send you guys along anyway, and I catch up in yellow or blue. The problem with that is all the tools I need to do this are distributed between these cars. <laughs> Everything is reliant on us sort of staying together as a group. Um... Well, we could leave them, right? <laughs> yeah, we got 75% 70, of the tools we need. There's yeah. a fuse here, and the fuse block is melted. Ooh. Yep. Ooh. That's our problem. Ah. That's our problem, child. We got to figure out what that does. It's and fixed. Fix it. <laughs> So we've fixed it. We just need to disconnect the auxiliary battery. What happened here is this is my charger for my lithium battery and the, it was drawing too much through the main wiring harness. So I just went ahead and snipped that for now. We'll be good. And we should be back on it. We got a little little potential breakdown. Dan called that he's uh, thinks a piece of his car is coming off. Yeah, sounds like it is. Got a couple of screws loose. Well, oh, not in your head. Yeah. Up top in the luggage rack. You have a luggage rack? Well, in the front, the front luggage rack. That's what's rattling. I don't think that fixed it. <laughs> it's working. This is what we call Kurt Power. It's the only Kurt powered van again <laughs> in the United States right now. We, uh, we just lost the engine again. Probably the same problem. Um, Kurt's really getting the initiation here. <laughs> Don't run me over. <laughs> so we just broke down again. I don't know why, don't know how, but all at once, once again, it just died. I bet you it's that same 30 amp fuse, but now we don't have a reason as to why it's blowing. It is not this. This is not blown. Now we got to figure it out. Different blown fuse. Interesting. Something's, something's broken in here. Well, let's just replace it and keep going. Okay, I put the fuse in. Let's see here. Fire it up. The fuse fixed it. For now. Why is it blowing fuses, though? Goes into... So we're looking at yellow, green here. Where yellow meets... Where yellow meets yellow-red is here at this dot. 
Yeah, that's worn okay. all the way through. That went to ground. Okay, back to fixing things. We'll get, <laughs> Actual here, repairs. That. <laughs> Thank you. Electricity box. Activate. We're back unbroken thanks to more fuses. Fuses. And a zip tie because and we. Zip ties. Yeah. Well, you gotta keep the wires off the exhaust. They work better that way. This is this is what it's like traveling with Dan. We're trying to not break down, and. Uh, Yep. That's a fresh steak right there. Where are we at? Milton? Yeah, Milltown. Milton? Milltown. Oh. We're in Milltown. It's yeah. good. You know what is cool? <laughs> Synchro stickers on a two-wheel drive. Yeah, don't do that. I get a lot of looks. You know, I, one of the things one of the things I was supposed to do before this trip was use my vinyl cutter to write not four-wheel drive and definitely not a synchro. But because I had to spend a whole day fixing your car, yeah. I didn't get a chance to vandalize it. Was it was more than one day. It was two days. It's definitely, it was definitely more than one whole day. I saw a van again. We doubled back. It looks like a synchro. Let's see what we got here. Whenever you see a bus, always stop. You never know if they're gonna wanna sell it. This is a really clean looking synchro with a Z-Tech engine in it. But it sounds like they don't want it to go. So, those guys are heading out. Um, that was crazy. We just stopped <laughs> here randomly to have water. And um, <laughs> this, these people on a bicycle came by and they were looking at the Vanigans. And uh, they said, I've got a Vanigan in the barn, but someone wants to buy it, but they wanted, they offered us a thousand dollars. I was like, well, I'm at 1500. So we're gonna go look at it oh <laughs> on God. our way home. We're gonna go, it's, we saw some pictures. It's a 1982 Westphalia. It looks pretty nice. So uh, we'll check it out on our way home. That's gonna be an exciting part of the, another chapter. This is an awesome road trip so far. It's absolutely beautiful. We got all of our buses in a row, having great communication with our uh, handheld radios here. Uh, I'm really having a good time. Amen. Tomorrow, Dan is going to sleep in because he's been, he, uh, he had no sleep. But then all four of us are going to jump into White Bus tomorrow morning. We're going to take just the White Bus over to the site. We're going to analyze the vehicle. You pay the person. We're going to get it put on a tow truck. We're going to follow it back here. Then we're going to take the car. We're going to put the car up on jack stand, which will have arrived by then. Pull the wheels off. You and Grant will take the wheels and the title to go do title and notary stuff and get tires put on. Don't forget to pick up a battery this time bring it with you um and then uh but before we before we do that we will go through a general analysis of the vehicle because we need to determine things like do we need a grease cap do we need a backing plate you know we don't need to get the engine running right away we need that general analysis because we have a expert vanigan mechanic with some parts availability coming here at five o'clock so if we need something we have to be able to give him that list um because from then on, we don't have a parts run. So it's what we brought, it's what tools we brought. We have to commit to getting that car out of this parking lot 24 hours later under its own power. Um, what about the, how, how quickly do we, how, I mean, isn't one of the other factors is how quickly we can determine if the transmission works? You gotta get the engine running. You gotta get the engine running. It probably works. <laughs> well, yeah. well, well, it'll, we'll I would that. say it's gonna be about two to three hours to get the engine running max being replaced. Ooh. So. Okay, I would suggest now we go get drunk and eat milk steaks. Oh, 
it's kind of gross on the inside, but that's okay. Actually, the seats aren't in bad shape. Automatic. It's got a little, a little issue down there. Just a little. It has the right amount of moss. We don't wash. We preserve. Yep. A lot of potential here. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, it's in the middle of fucking moving, as you can tell. Yes, this is correct right here. This is how you do it. Let it go. That's. That's. Don't touch that. Uh, <laughs> There's oh, look way. at that. That's an entire engine. Yeah. Would you look at that? And I like that the mice chewed holes in here and then they stored their nuts there. Yep. And there then this go. is chewed away. It's not there. This is good. This is going to be a fun time. Moss was found on Craigslist. It's uh, out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Original owner. It's got the window sticker. Uh, and they just drove it going camping. That's all they ever drove this van. Sat in a barn for five years until I got it. It's been sitting here for two. Unfortunately, my boy don't want to do this nice project. And as you can see, from the Northeast, this is one hell of a van. So when was the last time you think it ran? Probably like seven years ago, I'm thinking. Okay. You know? And, and the way they said, they, they babied this thing. He looked for all the paperwork, and that's the only thing he could find was that damn window sticker, which was a good thing to have. But um, Cool. That's why, I mean kind of jealous but i'm glad it's going to somebody hey, look their first westy yeah this, this is his is, first bus this is where it, this is where the universe meant for this to go why yeah. are you selling I it bought it with the intention to build this with my son rebuild the whole thing you know mechanically wise and uh because he wasn't getting my westy <laughs> so you know well it's going to a good home it's gonna be a fun project oh it's gonna be an awesome project it's gonna be ridiculous it's because it's yeah. just four to me it's 400 pounds of shit that like you hardly use yeah. when i went to look at my first westie to buy the guy was like hey tell me about this uh refrigerator and he was like if you could fit, fit a 12 pack of beer in there it's yours for free <laughs> <laughs> and then i asked him i'm like what, what's up with you know the sink what do you do spit in there at the you're not putting a pot of pan he's like i really don't use it and then i asked him about the stove because you're not making bacon and eggs and steaks in there with your tent, you know? And sure it, enough, he's like, I don't use it. I'm like, so you got 400 pounds of shit you don't use? And then I found out about these weekends. Yeah, that's the I, way to I go. Sold. And Are we there... literally had that very same conversation. Let's see. Before oh, we saw there's, there's no creatures in oh, here. Oh, there has been in here, I bet. Yeah, creatures! So there's, there's, yep. Oh, yeah, and... they live here. <laughs> Do they come with it? <laughs> They're free, man. <laughs> yes! <laughs> They're investors in the van. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Wow. Looks like it comes with a dustbuster vacuum from the 1970s. And perfect. Yeah, what it do you think? need a dustbuster. It's good. Seriously. It's a good car. I'm super excited. This is going to be great. This is how it goes down. This is how it happened. When they tell our story and they find us. <laughs> this is it, right? This is how it happened. The uh, Where is it? The VIN number is the same as the type. Yeah. That's why I think cool. I said... Well, we've waited two hours on AAA. They dispatched a company that we've since been in contact with that simply said they won't give us an ETA. It could be a couple hours or not available this weekend. We've called about a dozen other tow companies, and it turns out no one wants to tow a car in this whole area. So I don't know what we're doing. You're back. We are. Oh, because you took the keys with you. I know, that was stupid. Okay, now the tow truck driver can get it. Got to get rid of this parts car first. Looking for parts? Probably something. Synchro transmission. Oh, it's not a synchro no, transmission. No, but we do have... There's a locked wheel. Oh, and they're moving it back and forth trying to break the driver's side rear wheel loose. All the other three are moving nicely. And that one's rolling now too. So it's now loose. That was a good, that was a good move. That saved us a lot of time. We got kind of shaken down. This guy, after waiting for two hours, came to pick up and uh, tow it. And then, um, then showed up to tell us he wasn't interested in it. And we had to make it worth his while. So, doesn't matter. It's on a tow truck. 
He is driving with all of the speed possible to get it back. Never in my life seen a guy drive a tow truck like this. Chevy 6500. He's going fast. It's wide open. He is, he is sending it around those curves. This might be the fastest this Mannigan ever goes. We're hitting 74 miles per hour on these side roads trying to keep up with this guy. He is really driving. <laughs> You're holding on to the straps there. Yeah. So you went to Walmart. You got the tires. Got the tires mounted. Got a Napa battery. Got some water. It's going to be very hot tomorrow. Good to go. There's a feature that I never would have expected. Oh. This is a live frog that just survived an 80 <laughs> mile per hour tow. <laughs> okay, you're safe now. One of my absolute favorite tools to carry for working on a Vanagon is a new set of cheap hatch struts. This makes everything easier. So we'll start See, here. And now this can go up and down on its own. And it doesn't fall upon your head. It makes it yeah, safe. Let's get this party started. Uh, I already tried turning the key and it won't start. Um, it's probably because there's, you know, doesn't have a battery. Um, needs electricity. Needs some electricity. Let's do it. She turns. That's turns. Oh yeah. Compression. Full rotation. Yeah, I don't need a full rotation. Wise, we have some problems. This has been welded to this. That's not the way that goes. See those welds? I don't trust them. But from their back, it's not that bad. It's, oh yeah, it's pretty bad. No, it's broken there. Yeah, so it's broken there. And it, it wiggles here. We're gonna need, we have problems. Axles have good boots. They look to have good boots. Um, this all looks pretty tidy. The, that rear parking brake cable looks completely ruined. Exhaust wise, we have two of the four pieces we might need new, but we don't have the others and headers in the parking lot sounds pretty bad. Um, we'll have to evaluate that, take a better look at the axles and things like that, but let's start by prepping the engine to turn over under power. Okay, so I'm pulling things off to get some clearance so we can pull spark plugs and stuff. And in here you have Ooh, many things. And then in here, you have all of the nuts. This is where you keep the oh, nuts. Oh, yes. There's a whole, just a, just a collection of nuts. Wow. First time with a Vanagon? Oh, that came off real nice. Yeah, and then it, it's really nice. And then it slows down. It, like, knows what's going on. Ooh, there's brakes. I don't know if I trust those. No, they'll come off, but they're there. They okay. exist. So these soft lines frequently fail. Yeah. And, and then you gotta replace them and then it goes to a hard line up there. But that's like that's like, you know, up, oh, dust shields, gone. Nice. Gone. Doing a lot of good there. Looks like we can't find a date on the battery. That'll tell us a lot. I would read that as maybe. 7102. So 2002, the car's been sitting since 2002. So that gives us 20 years. Wow. Yeah, that's what I figured. The car has been sitting for 20 years. Look at all of the nuts back here. So many nuts. We're going through some of these vacuum lines. They're in horrible shape. They've just been eaten by mice and they just, they crumble. So we're just gonna build a replacement with some silicone. <laughs> We found out it's been sitting since 02, so we're gonna spray how many? We'll put some in. Some of the WDs. The and, Western Digitals. And uh, wake it up a little bit. Yeah. And let it sit while we're doing other things. Ooh, that's gross. That's not a great spark plug. That has seen some a oil. A lot of crap. So, sometimes in life, hitting it with a hammer doesn't get it off. So you need to get yourself burn the matic torch fire extinguisher just off site and we're going to heat right around the hub here burning all that knocker loose juice off
Okay, so that came off nicely. Oh, it yeah. did have fluid in it. That is it pretty atypical and uh, honestly not even expected. So that's good news. Nice. You got that loose. Oh, we had it. We, oh, it's all that's broken. Oh. It's in bad shape. Look at all of the dirt. Wow. So much dirt. Wow. So there's no pad at all. It's just not there. It's a that's good amazing. mix of uh, pad and dirt. It's pad. That's Patty. That, that drum might be shot. Uh, the backing yeah, plate looks no, strong. Aren't coming out. Well, those are getting replaced, yeah, but yeah. the backing plate is not. Yeah, and it nice. looks pretty good. So nice. let's good job, get the other Carter. side. Nice. We solved it. It's good. This is, looks better than that yeah, one. Yeah, that one's better. I don't know what happens if you strip a spark plug or round off a spark plug. Well, we would need a whole nother engine. Where are we going to find a whole nother engine? We have one right there, don't we? Oh, there's one. Yeah, yeah. that's good. So I'll just send it. Send it. Oh, yeah. This car came with a completely rebuilt 1.9 built by Bear in North or South Carolina. One of the Carolinas. A guy named Bear. He builds good engines. I've heard of him. This is brand new with a receipt. <laughs> Put my foot on the computer. So that spark plug really doesn't want to come out. Easier though. Wait, lefty tighty, righty loosey? Yeah, so it's 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 in to tighten out to loosen. Lockwise, clockwise. Lockwise, clockwise, correct. We got all the spark plugs out. Now we just gotta spray a little bit of these in the in the cylinders. There's 40 in the can and we have to distribute them accordingly. So I like to put at least 10 in each cylinder. So you just get her in there and you give it the one, two to 10. That's probably enough. And then you let it soak and you turn it around a couple of times. And then when you do fire it up, an immense cloud of smoke and dead mice families come out of the exhaust. There's a, there's a brake dust shield that goes here. Yeah. This is what remains. remains <laughs> it's not a lot. It's mostly gone. Yeah. Now we got to get the injectors injectory. So in order to get the injections occurring, we're going to hit them with some of the 18 volts. And that overcharges the injector just enough to make the little solenoid valve that's probably stuck shut be unstuck. This setup, it's new. It allows me to use my red batteries, which I like a lot more than the yellow ones. And I put some uh, of the Clippy Boys on there. And then we're going to just click these together until we hear some sounds coming out of there. So we got no sounds. And then you'll hear it all of a sudden. Hear it? That one's now working. That's all it took. We just back and forth this a whole bunch. You can hear it now. That one's going to do injectorings. All of the injectors have been freed up. Whether or not they're going to injector, that's a different story. Do we have any fuel pressure? Well, we don't have any fuel yet. We haven't even looked into the fuel pump. That's almost certainly ruined. So we'll start replacing those things, filter and whatnot, and then uh, we'll throw some juice in and see what happens. Was there gas in there, Kurt? A little bit. Now it's in my hat. Oh. Yeah. That's Just fine. this little puddle. You had to not... get it out anyway. Yeah. Um, so your safety glass is broke. Yeah, that's not very safe. I don't even know if I can tape that together. Oh, we'll fix it. We have super glue. It's super. We needed some fuel and a certain Jimmy DeResta provided. And at the cost of gas these days, you have to pay these celebrities a lot to make a fuel run for you. I had to fill them up. He gave us empty cans. Ah. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're popping this for the first time. And then push that bar all the way forward. That looks great on this side. Hey, that's fine. You can sleep in that. That'll do. It's the seat is alive. It's a green vehicle. It is a green vehicle. Oh, that was a cloud of dye. It works. It works? Yeah, just spit gas at me. Oh, good fuel pump. Oh my gosh. That never happens. It's rare. All over the... That's good, good job. <laughs> right in the face. I mean, everything has no corrosion. There has been almost no water in this van until recently. I mean, just the plastic and all the... This floor is nice. It's slippery. Everything's in, in nice condition. And the biggest part, these weekenders have just so much space. 
like so much space. Forget, you can't hang out and entertain in your camper, but here we can have a party. We've got seating for six. Wild. We're gonna put some oil in it because it needs oil, and we're gonna mix together all of the oils we can find. I found this SAE 30 non-detergent Valvoline from sometime in 1993. That should do. New use for this tool. Well, we're gonna see if, uh, if anything starts coming on inside when we apply some power. We've put some electricity on it. Give there it a key, is, uh, just give it key first position. Key first position. It makes noises. It makes noise. That's okay, give me a crank. One crank and stop. Yeah! Doesn't need a starter. <laughs> that's good news. Do it one No, that's a fast crank. She's cranking healthy. The one, the la one of those, so it was, well, it been the, the spark plugs are out. She's spinning real fast. Ready? You can't. Good, stop. I like that. Quiet on set! Oh, sorry. What are you doing with that? Uh, this came with the van, so I'm trying to clean up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you it sucks to, stuff up a you little can, bit. Hang on, let me see that. Here, here. That really sucks. Here, turn, turn around. There you go. Hey, turn, turn around more. Oh, yeah. It gets the the dirt off. That's what, that's the, that's, that's what a vacuum does. Yep. The light works. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, do it again. I feel like I needed to put more feeling into <laughs> do, it. Do it again. Once more with feeling. The light works. What? Oh, we need windshield wipers because otherwise it goes scrapey scrapey and you ruin everything. And it looks like it's going to rain. Why? Oh, fuck it. Good enough. I put I in some good spark plugs. These are the NGK BP6 ETs. These are going to make every Vanagon a much happier Vanagon. Oh, is they that have, the end? They have all of the, they have the triple. This is a threesome spark plug. You want a threesome. You got to take this little dude out. clock. So in the last three hours, we have pulled the fuel pump, tested it that it's good, replaced all the fuel hoses down there, including the fuel filter. Uh, drained the tank. We have taken all four wheels off. We've got all the brakes off. We're ready to put on new calipers, rotors, and wheel bearings in the front. Soft lines. Uh, we might have to make a hard line. The rears, we got the drums off. We've put new slave cylinders on. We've put a battery in. That's new. We've turned it over with the starter. It's turning great. We got all the spark plugs out and put some of the WDs in there. Um, what else? We've replaced some vacuum hoses. We're rebuilding an intake. And I think we're doing really well. I think we're probably about two hours away from this car firing up for the first time in probably around 20 years. We're gonna test compression. It doesn't tell us a lot, but it might tell us if something is very broken. So we'll see what we get. Go ahead, stop. That's a real healthy stop. Stop. 130. 130. Stop. This smells like urine real bad. This is the oil breather hose, and it looks horrible, so we'll replace that. Could you please hand me the CRC brand knocker loose juice? Oh, yeah, good product placement. I love CRC brand knocker loose juice. So happen this is the biggest socket that we have. And oh, that is, it that is, is as good exactly as it gets. the right size. Send it. For a picnic table rebuild, that'll do. Okay, so I got the brake line off over here and i'm taking it off over here it leads to this so i got the brake line off over here and it comes across this frame rail and leads to this t right here and right there doot, doot, doot. and i'm going to take it off and put a new one on let's go ahead and put a new cap and rotor and some wires on here because i don't know they look ugly Let's make better ones. If you look at this one here, you can see it's got considerable wear on the right side. It's real carboned up. This is a new one. Let's run the new we one. We imported an expert. <laughs> That'll do. Andrew, this one is beautiful. How's it going? How are you, man? Right. This looks great. Yeah. What is this, 85? It's 89. A little rough around the edges. I think it looks great. It's okay. What engine's in here? 
a 1.8. Turbo, turbo yeah. counterclockwise? Yeah. yeah. So this, this engine spins backwards? Yep. Yeah. Cool. We have an army of people that can straighten this bumper. Yes. So we sent Andrew with That's the task okay. of, yeah. of some parts and he, he delivered. Yeah. Um, he just has these things. I love this. Yeah, yeah we can make it work. The bumper is a gift. That, that. I couldn't get that brake line off, so I ended up just cutting it off, but it had a hole in it. Oh, that's bad. Anyway. Let's get one without a hole. You're making brake lines. Have you ever done this before? No. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's They're not, brakes. I, I'm not the one that has to stop the bus. Exactly. <laughs> like I said, I don't care. As long as it goes forward, I'll figure out how to stop it. All right, we're going to start working on these front brakes, uh, taking them apart. We're going to start pulling off this dust cap with this uh, tool here. Hey, we need to fill the coolant up so we can fire up the engine. And we need some water. I got this white claw. It's a raspberry. Let's go ahead and put that whole thing in there. Quit wasting your white claw! We got Andrew Flint, expert mechanic, Vanigan guy, right there doing brakes. Uh, ben is working on some front brake stuff when it's going very well. Um, we have new wheel bearings and all that. It's done. Uh, it's done. Yeah. Both sides? Both sides. Sweet! So, Ben, do we have all of the we well wheel bearings that we need? Yes. Check. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. Great. I will go ahead and throw out the other ones. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, nice improv. <laughs> Action. Okay. So, we got to put fuel in it. This is my favorite device. We'll put a link on Amazon. But basically, it's got this ball valve device. And then you just do the, mm, the, that motion that you're familiar with. Ooh. And you get your Jimmy DeResta gasoline into the gas tank, as long as you put this up high enough. Yeah. So just key on, you're but, just sparking it by hand. Yeah, just turn it back and forth. But the fuel pump should run at the same time. And it isn't. It's not. Okay, so fuel so, pump isn't running. Look at this setup. This feels very professional. Now we're gonna replacing the uh, well, the brake the master the cylinder fuel pumpage. Even though we've determined the fuel pump does work, it's just getting no electricity. So something's a little bit wrong here. Is there electricity we'll fix it. at the output of the relay? Uh, this wire no. has no continuity from this end to this ah. end. This is the ground for the fuel pump, and that's probably what's giving us our problem. Ah. Pulls right out. <laughs> just uh, making some new brake lines. A couple of them weren't any good so we're using copper nickel brake lines which are very flexible um, to bend to shape but they're also pretty permanent they won't rust out and they're good for okay us. so you're just jumpering this with a screwdriver yeah. and that's yeah. not we got that's no not power getting, so we don't have power to the fuel pump what are you guys doing we're, I don't know. We're making a very long wire to buy You should be everything. videoing this. We are. Stop. So how long have you been doing uh, YouTube? Never. Well, you started. All right. I, Just right now. I'm a superhero. You're a superhero. <laughs> Can I tell you? So, what do you want to tell the people oh, YouTube right. in your in your debut? Uh, watch more of Opie Taylor's videos. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Opie Taylor? <laughs> you guys don't know who Opie Taylor is. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who's OP Taylor? Okay, we are running the fuel pump off an 18 volt battery and we are building fuel pressure, checking for leaks, but we still don't get any fuel pumpage from the fuel pump relay. So that's a fun problem. Okay, Kurt, I think we got fuel pumpage. Whenever you're ready, give it a crank. Kurt. Hey. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me make sure we're getting a spark. Crank it. Yep. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. We just need to crank faster. Yeah. You brought a jump pack, right? I did, yeah. So? I think we ran the battery down with my vacuum cleaner. <laughs> you were vacuuming. I was vacuuming. How did the... And it turns out that was a horrible idea. Vacuum came with the van. Yeah. It plugs into the, the lighter. Yeah. But it didn't really work very well. No, it's horrible. Like, I literally was like moving the mouse poop into a pile and then trying to suck it up, and it was just putting it back where it was to begin with. It sucked. Fire it up, Kurt. It's not faster. It's a little faster. Send it. She wants to go.
Give it a shot of starting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get the go juice. We're going to give it a little bit of the go juice here. A little starter fluid. We're going to spray. Okay. Send it. Whoa, there we go. No. Did, yeah! you, did you shut it off? No, it's starter fluid. Oh, yeah. It's going to make a lot of smoke. We're running a lot of oil on here. All right, ready to do it again? Yep. Go ahead. So fast, though. Up oh, back in this is this is way. Uh, the throttle spring is off. It's a lot of progress. All right, crank it up. Fire it up. Great. Yeah, and it's not dumping all the antifreeze. That should be shorting out, right? That's not, I mean, that's a temporary. I know, but this was sitting on here. Uh, see, fuel pump, and it comes up. That's the relay right there, and there's two wires, and they have a W in yeah. white right there. So that's that's the, the fuel pump wire, and you're losing somewhere between here and there you got a bad connection or corroded wire or mouse chewed wire and it's got low voltage well we'll test it and uh we'll this is just a temporary it. thing but it, you can drive it home like yeah. that not with the jumper wire but yeah we'll, we'll, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll we'll, yeah, we'll trick it yeah. nice so all the lights are coming on to tell us that all the lights work and when we fire it up they should all go out that means everything works that's amazing. We have a power steering wake up here. Well, you're gonna be spraying all the juices. You don't need power steering. That's for weak people. But we'll just you, take the belts off. Did you fill that yeah. up? Um, you know, we can see you. We have spent the last, I don't know how many hours, just so we could be like, hey, everything is done. There's the last thing we need to do is put brake fluid in it and we can drive this car. And while looking for brake fluid, we have determined that Dan took it out of the car that right. we packed while he was on his honeymoon. We're going to drive it with the e-brake. No, that's a yeah, bad idea. <laughs> Wheels on. Yeah. Why did we make all of the brakes work and then Dan doesn't have any juice? From with the, the brake fluid. From the black thorn? With the brake fluid. Where'd you find this? I got connections, yo. Wow. So th we really appreciate this. Oh, you're I'll, so very warm. Do you want to ride in the van on no. Bert's maiden voyage? I need to go to bed. It's seat six. Thank you very much. This is literally you coming in at the 11th hour. <laughs> so we have here some mountain magic. I'm going to add this to the machine, but have everybody look out for brake leaks because we don't have that much magic. We have enough. We have just enough magic. Oh, we got to install that. Okay, it is just before midnight. It is on its own wheels. It has brake fluid in it. We found some brake fluid, and uh, it does have a leak. We will have to fix that tomorrow, but I think we are safe to drive this tonight.
Greg here had to hold a studio light out the window because the headlights don't work. Um, the brakes lost all of the breakage, so they didn't really work. And the throttle cable seems to have snapped, so Dan here had to uh, Dan had to go ahead and uh, he had to do Dan things. He climbed in, climbed in the back and did a manual override. The Daniel override. He hand throttled the thing the whole way here. So uh, moral of the story, it drove before midnight. Good morning, friends. It's another day. We did well last night. Uh, last night, just before midnight, we had the car running well enough, reliably enough, starting up, and uh, had brakes, but at the last second, we blew a brake line. We need to go through that a little more meticulously, but we thought we'd take it for a spin anyway. That was pretty fun. We all piled in the car and drove around the place, uh, relying mostly on the parking brake and the front brakes, and the throttle cable, it turns out, doesn't work. So we had Dan back there handling the throttle while I did the driving. Also, we're losing a lot of power steering fluid, but you know what? The car works. Today, let's fix those things. We've basically just got today, because after that, we need to drive it 600 miles home. we finish these tasks, we will pull the tape off the window. Just got up. We'll first start on this. Bumper should be way high. Yeah, I mean, replace fuel lines on engine. They just burn down. We already, re oh, on the engine. Okay, so with a known good headlight switch, that didn't solve it. Uh, the headlights could be burned out. They could just be shit. So let's pop the grill off and check that. First night in the van. It was wonderful. I w I'm like shocked how, how, uh, comfortable the bed is got the headlight out um instead of testing for voltage there let's just test that the headlight works so um we can go from brown to either of these two so if we put this on this guy and then this on either of the others it should it should light up you get any light there yep it works so let's uh clean this up and well, let's test for voltage now. Um, so we are having some issues with the turn signal. Um, and that's because this was in there, floating in water. This is not the correct terminal. And uh, obviously the bulb is completely broken. So we're going to place it with the correct terminal, which is this guy, um, connected to those wires. And then we should be good to go. A piece of the throttle pedal is just missing. There's a little rod that goes from the pedal to a relay lever, and the relay lever sends the cable. We have that. We are just missing the that. We're going to have to do some blacksmithing and make one. A lug. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you think maybe the headlights aren't working because of the ignition switch? Yes. So we put a known good ignition switch on, just turn that with a screwdriver, and let's see if that solves things. Yeah, that seems dangerous. Oops. Oh. <coughs> Looks. Wow. Oh yeah, we got headlight. You're good. Ignition Bad ignition switch. Cool. Cool, we can fix I that. I diagnosed the problem. <laughs> you did it. Yeah. Now you have to replace okay, it. I climbed under my car and took the thing off. We needed this. So we're going to have to have a team of blacksmiths produce this for us. I believe in them. We're good. forging it. Cold forge. That's making huge advancements. It's, it's, it's pretty much repaired. That's good. Yeah. That'll work just fine. It's done. This piece was missing. This attaches the throttle uh, pedal to the throttle cable. And because this is a blacksmithing event, we enlisted Chris Cash uh, to build us one. And it's inspirationally good. It's cool. like exactly the same. Perfect. Good job, Chris. Thanks, man. So we got this brake tee off. <laughs> what else is there? We had to cut all the lines because it was horrible. But we don't have another tee, so we, we have to reuse this. So we're making new lines and we're reusing this. That sucked. Gotta make some lobster rolls. Gotta use the tools you've got. Now we took a little break for lunch, and uh, thanks to lobsteranywhere.com, 
who can mail you lobster, live lobsters or lobster rolls anywhere. We're gonna have a fantastic, what are you doing? Okay. My hands are dirty, Dan says. It's that simple. Head white right, head white right. Uh, you've got these and that's uh Okay, now we're gonna put new parking brake cables on because they're ruined. We snapped one last night while we were driving around having fun. So we have them, let's put them but on. Thanks for asking. <laughs> we did the soft lines too. I gotta get, what I gotta get is this uh, brake hose or brake line right back there. They're great. Yeah, on, on that tee that that's uh, that line leads into is a line that goes all the way to the back. So that'll make the last line we have to replace. Save it. Fuel lines, exhaust, trans fluid flush. I don't know if that's gonna happen. So, optional, optional. What other lights, are Are all the lights working? Yeah. Nice. We basically spent the whole day doing brakes. We are almost done replacing all of the brake lines. So then it's just done. In the meantime, we've also replaced the parking brake cables. We've got all of the lights working, including the headlights and turn signals. There had been some issues there. What else have we done? Um, mostly brakes. Oh, we uh, cleaned the bottom two feet of the car. Oh yeah, we had a bunch <laughs> of children do labor and they cleaned the bottom two feet of the car. Yep. They did good work. Did good work. So next is cooling. And uh, we gotta finish the brakes off, do the cooling system and start driving this one out this is the fuel line that burns all the cars down this little plastic to who's it here it fat passed through the firewall and then when it breaks over time it leaks all of the gasoline onto the hot exhaust right above the starter and the car catches on fire and that's why there's not a lot of anagans left so we got a brake leak is it one of the three lines we didn't replace i don't know hit the brake hit the brake yeah it's coming from up top oh I... it's the oil well, we gotta change the oil. The oil in here is from a fully different administration. Fire it up. Let's cut this uh, power steering belt. Kurt doesn't need that. Nobody needs that. If I can't have that, nobody can have that. I have power steering. Uh, there's a hole in the fuel pump, probably, that's leaking through the fuel pump. So we're putting this aftermarket garbage fuel pump on. I'm sure it's gonna be super loud. It's a little bit smoky, but it's running pretty darn smooth. We still have to clean up the exhaust a little bit. The smoke is coming out of the vents, but that's oil that was on the exhaust and stuff. Um, it's going well. We got temperature? We got temperature. Let me see. Right in the middle. Oh, up there. Oh yeah, it's good. Okay. So, I, uh, I'm gonna say this. It's running great. But I don't really want to continue working on it all night. I'm cool. hot. I'm sweaty. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. But, um, you good? Clear? Kick that brakes. There's some brakes. They're not great brakes. Oh, there. We gotta wait again. Miss Parker. We gotta do adjustments. The throttle cable is stuck, so it does that, and then you have to. Yeah, that's too. <laughs> that that went too far. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of power all once. Throttle back there. No, I just send it. No. We'll push it. Push it. Neutral. Give us neutral. The uh, ball joint that is part of the throttle system, but still gotta do some fiddling down here. It's not going great, but I think it's gonna work. I don't think it's gonna break. So I'm giving up. I'm done. I'm beat. I'm spent. We're not driving tonight. Oh, we're driving. Oh, it's way, it's way. Oh, it's fucked. I didn't touch the pedal at all. Yeah, it's happy spot is way off. We have to do big adjustments. I think now it moves, so we just need to solve the problem. End of the night and the spirits are not that high. Uh, we are behind. I would even say we are further behind today than somehow we were yesterday. Somehow 
today got absorbed doing brakes like the whole day um all the brake lines are new now and things seem to be good but we have other issues the throttle is sticking um it's not drivable in that capacity we still haven't fully tested the cooling system the exhaust is broken off it needs to be welded on and uh yeah we have some issues but there's a lot of good it is running pretty well um the transmission has shifted at least once the brakes seem to be holding pressure and now they're just fully redone so that's done forever um things are we're getting there but it's been very discouraging uh it's been a very long day it was over 90 degrees and that took a lot out of us and I, I really tried to power through but at this point i'm i'm pretty done it's 11 30 and i'm quitting we're supposed to leave tomorrow and i i really don't know how that's gonna go uh well we have to leave tomorrow so we got this i think part of our throttle issue was in the throttle body itself so we're switching this out to a newer style that we brought with us and hopefully this fixes our throttle issue. So we need to shorten this spring. That's what we've concluded. After adding other return springs on zip ties and stuff, we're gonna start cutting. Yeah, okay, I had to do some weird witchcraft. We shortened this spring, we added another one. It's attached to a zip tie here. I adjusted this all the way out, but it's pretty much drivable now, probably, unless it's ruined. We'll try it. I think I fixed the throttle cable. Let's go for a test drive, Kurt. Is this thing returning? Yeah. Is this return? Oh, there's no. We put the we put springs on the other side. You think it was set up wrong? I don't know if it was set up wrong, but it works that way. Good. So now it's the throttle is throttling off. Yeah. What else? What? Okay. Uh, give Give us a breakdown of this morning so far. It's been super stressful. We drove it around, and we couldn't get it to throttle down. So we were like jamming on the brakes and. The car still wanted to go forward, but the car still wanted to go forward. So it's a great engine, that's, right? Okay, that's a glass half full. I mean, that's it. The engine wants to run, which yeah. is crazy. Well, so, we got it to idle now, and, and it's uh, working perfectly. It's got a beautiful interior. It doesn't smell like mouse. No, not yet. You've already confirmed. You can. I could in pee there. in it. I think it looks good. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. So what just happened? Uh, a guy at the gas pump was explaining to us that he wants to sell a VW. I said, listen online, he says, I don't do the internet. I'm wearing a shirt <laughs> that says I do the internet. Just in that time, we got active drips. Oil's coming oh, out yeah. of that, that valve cover gasket. We'll have to put one on. We can. We don't have We chose to have our first breakdown here at uh, this guy's place. 
apparently a couple of resources around, so I don't know. We'll fix it. Oh, yeah, that valve cover seal is ruined. Look at how ruined that valve cover seal is. Let's just put a new one on and. Ooh, there's silicone in there and everything. Silicone. Somebody's being a bad. What? It came off at the head. It broke. So can you weld it? I'm not gonna. Weld it to the head? No. It's we're done. Nope. All good. Run it. Yep. Yeah, run it. It's gonna get worse. We swapped her out with the, the cheap the cheap stuff. But it's a fresh change, so it should be good. We are actively breaking down. Uh, it looks fuel, fuel related if I had to guess, but Kurt is, uh, he's losing it back there. I'm just ready to tow. He can run for about 20 feet at a time. We're just gonna get off to this shady tree. Seems like a good place to break down. It's a hot day. So when you hit the gas, it shuts off. Well, it, it stalls out. It bogs down? Yeah. Yeah, fuel filter. And then, well, what I noticed is when I started back there, yeah, it's starting to kick, yeah, because it's idling at a higher rate than it was. Fuel filter. The whole thing is good. Yeah, fuel filter. What do you think? Yeah, there's the square one. We should put a second one. We can put a second one in. Ugh, we're losing a lot of oil here. This motor's no good. coming out of the oil filter. We can fix that. Did you tighten the oil filter? I don't, I don't know if the other, uh, I forgot to check the other oil filter and see if the seal came out with it. Maybe they're double stacked. We'll just tighten her up. We're losing a lot of oil. I bet fuel filter. Loose oil filter. All good. All clear. Back on the road. Seems to be fuel filter related. It's probably clogged. So we're gonna clean it out and put in a bigger canister filter. One of those. This little doodad got a lot of garbage in there already. You just gotta just put your mouth in it. Ew. Yeah, it's good taste. That was only a 10 minute breakdown. Not bad. Quick little 10 minute breakdown. Fuel filters cleaned out. We'll get a big tractor filter somewhere and send it. so far we've made it about 50 miles and uh, we need to get another fuel filter but things are going well I think we're I think we've got this I think this is gonna work we're mid breakdown again we lost all power it's gonna be fuel filter related I'm just gonna get to a safe spot here and pull off Gotta do some fixing this is why you want to take a break while traveling and check things over that alternator is about to snap off been a pretty wonderful adventure. The whole idea that we can take this bus, which has been sitting for, we think, about 20 years, get it working in a weekend, and drive it, drive it 600 miles home, that's pretty wild. A little gas station repair here. The alternator belt was mighty loose. A couple of other things, but we've made it pretty far. It's running pretty well. That was so Nice. How's it going so far, Kurt? So far, so good. Yeah. We put a lot of miles on it today. Yeah. It's driving pretty good. Driving pretty good. Yeah, it's still pushing a little bit, but okay. it's getting louder. Is it? Oh yeah. I can't tell anymore. I can yeah. still hear that stupid fuel pump. Though. We had to pull off real quick because uh, Kurt saw some steam or something. We're not really sure yet, so uh, we're gonna investigate a bit. Brakes aren't hot. With no wheel bearing heat. It wasn't on fire, but uh, that's always a concern. So we're keeping the battery uh, ground really loose so it's easy to pop off if something does start burning in the dash or anything. You're down to one functional light on the right side and one functional light on the left side. 
they're not in the same light, and those which light has, works has changed multiple times. What happened? Windshield waiver stopped working. Okay. Well, let's start by looking at the fuse, but we don't have any spare fuses. Yeah. We'll take a fuse out of something else. What yeah. do you, so what what, can we take? Yeah, what went bad? The windshield wipers and, uh, wait, what was it? 10 well, and 12. The 10, windshield wiper, washer, and blower. Yeah. And 12 is horn and backup lights. Okay. Yeah, we knew the horn was doing weird stuff, so that That, that probably out. blew yesterday. What, what fuse did we blew. steal? Let's see. So 10 is a 16 amp emergency flasher system and radio. Yeah, I take that one. Or radiator fan. No. Oh, no, I can't have that. Yeah, so it's got to be the emergency flash and radio, which is in number nine. Well, the radar looks clear, so let's just send it. Just got some more gas because the 85 has no work. Proceed to the route. Um, we're just filling up about once an hour and putting about, well, just putting five gallons in. We don't want to fill it full because I bet the crossover tube is bad and it's all going to come out. So that's our plan. It's working so far. I mean, technically, you didn't just hit a deer. The deer hit you. Yeah, he's at the door. I think one of my rear view mirrors is looking. I'm kind of annoyed with that thing. Wow, it's like he banged the door real hard. Ugh. I can't believe that. Kurt just hit or got hit by a deer. A deer ran alongside the road, ran out, and it ran right into Kurt going 45 miles per hour. It, Kurt didn't hit the deer. The deer hit the side of the car. I bet it left the dent. I'm curious to see how that worked out. We got a steam leak. Sometimes you can turn the water pump over by hand a few times. Keep the engine from going. We just overheated right here, and uh, yeah, we're definitely losing coolant there. Probably blew a hose. Um, Kurt, you did a great job pulling off the road right away, and let's see how bad it is. Oh, where's the new dent from hitting a deer? Oh, yeah, they, they, I told them they were on with me about the deer. Right here. There's deer face. This is pieces of deer. There's like no body damage. Oh, what about this? Is this from the deer? No, no, that's that, that was, was there. there. Yeah. This is deer, though. We broke down next to an ice cream parlor, so that makes sense. We decided to get ice cream. <laughs> Let's get some ice cream. Proceed. I mean, if you're gonna let the car cool down, you might as well get ice cream. So it looks to me like it's actually not a hose we blew, but it's the thermostat O-ring. So I think we just need to pop that thermostat cover off, toss an O-ring on it, Bob's your uncle. I don't know. And put more water in there, right? We should put some juices in for sure. Let's just fill it up with water and drive it over to that well-lit parking lot at an advanced auto parts. Uh, we put water in and it's just pouring right out. It won't hold it at all. But it is coming from right there. Look at that. That's crazy. What the fuck broke? That is a very, very, very atypical spot. Go ahead and back it up a little bit so we're on the concrete. We'll fix it. There. <laughs> you just, you just wrecked into Dan. <laughs> yeah, you just, you backed right into him. He's standing there eating ice cream. <laughs> I have no mirrors. But you just, I mean, you, you hit him in like the best way possible. You did basically no damage, but Holy crap! What? Sorry. <laughs> I'm draining the oil into a plastic storage drawer because it's all I have. Uh, I need to take the oil filter off so I can get access to this bolt, and then we'll just put the oil back in. I think we'll be fine. Well, that's not going in there at all. No, I don't want the coolant to get in there, so... I mean, it'll burn off. We'll soak it up so that the top comes. Pizzazz! I got these bolts out, which is surprising. So I think we're gonna actually be able to get this fixed and drive it out. I don't know. 
There's not a whole lot of logic to that having blown. Maybe it was something else. Maybe it was something else. I think this doesn't fix it. I think it's that bastard hose I talked about. Okay, let's replace that too. But if it is that, we're half, more than half done. Okay. So, you know, that goes lots of ways. Okay. Um, I found this seal. It's round. This seal was square. I don't think it's supposed to be square, which could explain something. I don't know that this is right, but boy, does it feel right. It could be so wrong, but it feels so right. So we'll try it. What's the worst that could happen? Did you guys find that bolt? Yep. Nice. It's in my hand. Nice. Well, I did it. I put a new O-ring on there. Uh, I didn't break any bolts. I lubed them all up when I put them back in. So let's see if we put water in, if it stays in this time. You know what's better than water for your van again? Beer, truly. Well, water with lemon. Water with lemon will solve that. Yeah. How do you eat this? I don't think that's the right way. It's not that bad. <laughs> Build some oil, but if we catch it, we can use it again, right? So, or we can just dump it in a different place. I like to put it on the floor. See, the problem is we don't have a funnel, so we only get about 12% of the oil back in the engine. So we just do this a couple of times. We're going to give up on that plan. Yeah. Yeah, it seems good. Well, it happened. Don't worry. It's not because we're giving up. It's because the town told us we're not allowed to be here. So we're taking it to a safe place so we can work on it there. I thought for sure I was about to hit a deer, but it's, it's little Sebastian. He's just chilling in the road. Bro, there's a miniature horse right there. You can't be there, dude. You're a horse. Um, anyway, it looks like uh, this hose clamp is just loose. Like, totally loose. So, we might not have even blown this hose. We might just be leaking around this clamp. Let's tighten it up and see if the juices stay in. We blew a pushrod tube seal. A bunch of oil's coming out. Okay. Well, I want to run this just for even 30 seconds. So we can see if our coolant takes So, before all the oil comes out. Can you fire that up for me? So, this is fine? Yeah. Start this now? Uh, well, Kurt likes to take the keys and wander around. Now, all the oil started coming out of a push rod tube. These covers need to come off. They're pretty optional. You don't really need them, so I'm just going to cut it here. They're always in bad shape, so we'll just cut it off. Like I said, this piece, you don't need it. It's optional. Now, let's figure out where we're leaking from. Ooh, got a new leak, too. Let's fix that. Let's just leak up with a little super glue. You just put it right on the seam there. It solves everything. I'm sure this exhaust is particularly attached. See, it moves a lot down there. Then if you look at this front header, it's just like, it's just about, I mean, I think the whole thing is gonna fall off at once. That's gonna be amazing. This wiring plug right here is where all my volts were going to the fuel pump. Took it off, cleaned it up with a little bit of the CRC, and uh, we got 12 volts here, so now let's just hope that the wire's good the rest of the so way. So what have you done for them lately? Oh, well, we cleaned a lot of grounds. We figured out we put too much oil in. We ripped some tins off, and we're rewiring the factory wiring so that the fuel pump will run that way, hopefully. It's running way smoother. So we're up here at Dan's and there's a parts van. Well, it's not a parts van. Someday it will drive, but it's full of parts. And here's an auto trans and the thing, and you can see this is how it's supposed to go. And it's got tons of resistance, but in our case, that was just at the wrong spot. So I don't know what's up with ours, but um, that exists. So we did pretty good. Um, let's see, I cleaned all the grounds on the engine. That made the engine run phenomenally better. The coolant leak was just a loose hose clamp that we couldn't see because the air conditioning compressor. I had a trained and certified air conditioning HVAC guy come out to inspect and vacuum out the system before removing the compressor. No, I didn't do that. Uh, there was no juice in it, of course. Um, so we just yanked that sucker out, could see it, give it all this, and then she's good.
Uh, she's holding pressure. She's holding oil. I don't know what that thing was before with all the oil coming out, but whatever. It went away. And uh, the fuel pump is now running on its factory wiring. No more of that janky jumpered crap. Just had to clean some uh, connections up. The biggest issue now is the exhaust has basically fully dissolved. It might fall off as a complete unit, but more importantly, even if it's open headers, the one uh, cylinder three pipe is shooting right out of CV boot and it we saw some fire come out of it. So it's probably gonna burn the CV otherwise. So we're gonna just hold it up with a combination of beer cans, uh, hose clamps, and some steel zip ties, some metal zip ties that I have. Uh, a buddy of mine who's a lineman gave them to me and they've, they've helped out before. So let's well, here's do our repair. I put a hose clamp around here and a metal zip tie up around the intake holding it on and it's pretty, it's pretty solid. I bet that even quiets the car down. We're in pretty good shape. I'm pretty happy with everything. So we're just gonna degrease the whole bottom with the CRC heavy duty degreaser. Just gonna spray it all on there, get the engine up to temperature and pour a bunch of water all over it. Not gonna do too much effort, but I wanna be able to find the fresh leaks when they happen. Makes it way easier to find new leaks and new problems. Let's just get her a little bit clean, just a little bit, not too much, just a bit. A quick radio check with the uh, Gingerbread Good Times band. Got a cassette here. Let's see if she plays. Nope. Oh, there we go. Oh, then that went away. Oh, it's got problems. It's got problems. started leaking uh, automatic transmission fluid. I wouldn't say we're leaking a lot, but we are certainly leaking some. Uh, so we got to put some... We don't have a funnel. This whole trip without a funnel felt pretty ambitious. So I'm walking over to the Dollar General. They should have one. So you're saying because we never checked the transmission fluid, you were worried about it? Yeah. Well, maybe we just need to put more in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's... Should be all we need to do, hopefully. Yeah. Right? Yeah, looks good to me. Yeah. Good. Well, it's just the two of us now. It's just me and Kurt heading along, uh, taking the side roads, enjoying the views, and the bus seems to be running fantastically. It's uh, cleaning up the grounds and stuff this morning really, really perked it up. Uh, we put some transmission fluid in it. That's got it shifting a little better too. And it's it's really doing well. We got about 100, 125 miles to go. And I'm starting to get pretty confident. This mirror sucks because these mirrors suck. So I put a hose clamp on here and got it real nice and tight. And now, I don't know, maybe it's gonna work. I don't know. First round of cleaning it. It's doing something. It's making some difference. Yeah. Gonna need a lot more cleaning. There's no exhaust on the engine, and I can hear the fuel pump run over top of all that noise. So you would With say- With the windows rolled down. You would say, in general, don't buy the aftermarket fuel pump? Don't buy the aftermarket fuel pump. Unless you like the sound of Yeah. Oh, that's a good, you did, that's a perfect copy. You. I've been listening to it for 300 miles, yeah. 400. We've given Kurt one heck of a crash course in how to work on, maintain, and repair Vanigans. He's having a good time.
good time, I hope. I'm having a great time. Hope you're having a good time. Thanks for watching. Sure looks it. It looks to be coming from, it looks to be wet in here. Oh, that's what you, you smoked the trans because you've been stopped too long. Should have shut it off. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Because it's been Because it's been, go, it's been pushing. So what do we do? I don't know. We let it cool down, that's for sure. And then we put it over there, and then we solve that. Yeah, I mean, my now my now concern is all of the juices are coming out. That's a lot of juices coming out. Yeah, now we get to pull the pan. We can't it's just probably... add, we can't just add it now. Okay. So we have to drain it, and we have to put we have all the stuff, but we just have to do it. I bet it can drive to wherever it needs to. Okay, so we're safe. Tell us what safe. happened. Um, the transmission overheated and dropped all the fluid because we were stopped waiting for construction traffic. Yeah, that's not ideal. No, so now we have to remove the plant, pan, replace the gasket, refill it, Hope and go for home. the best, yeah. Yeah. How much is coming out? See, but now it's not, unless it's just because it all came out. We should check the level. We put in a mountain, maybe a half quart, and it immediately flowed back out. So I think we get to solve that problem now. So the theory is it's just this pan, but the way it's coming out from back there looks like, like a main seal. You can see it's all juiced up up there too. The seal between the- Yeah, the, the seal between the engine and the trans. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Well, that was pretty stupid, but you know, that's the way we roll. We accidentally took off the uh, wrong pan. Didn't realize it till we looked at the gasket. So we drained all the gearbox oil, not the ATF. And uh, we don't have any gearbox oil, so I'm gonna go get some. Kurt's gonna do the other thing. Hardware store uh, in this weird little town. I got some gearbox oil because we drained it by accident. Uh, some tube and a funnel. Funnels have been our challenge this event. And uh, we should be good, probably. Well, yeah, luckily we brought the tool. This is a 17 millimeter Allen wrench, but uh, I just buy a really long Allen wrench off of, I think Amazon cut it into like seven of these and give them to the people. You take that and you put it in the end of a seven, 17 millimeter open end, you'll be good. Very friendly. Yeah, so we've had some people stop to offer help and hopefully this transmission goes back together easily. Hopefully. We accidentally took all of the oil out of the gearbox. gearbox. So we put the gearbox back together and filled that up. Then we replaced the gasket for the transmission pan. Yep. Filled it back up. No leaks. Uh, we added a little bit of oil. We should filled be ready. It all up. Yeah. Yeah, we should be good to go. We should be good to go. Good job, Kurt. Two hours to go. We got this. Like I always say, reliability has to be earned. It can't be bought. And today, you earned a lot of reliability. I think I need to earn a little bit more. Now, if we could just get home before it rains, because the wipers still work. I know, that's what I just keep thinking. I'm like, fuck, I know it's going to be close, but I don't want to stop. Especially looking at the clouds. I checked the radar and it looked fine, so I don't know. Let's just keep going. We'll start, put it neutral. Try it there. Shut it off, all the way off. Go back to neutral and yeah, back all the way on. Um, okay, stop. Yeah, so it's not a neutral safety switch issue. Try, try that again, go back to park, go back to neutral. Try it in neutral, not in park. Okay, stop. Yeah, starter's not getting volts. Just started. Starter's not getting volts. We just had our first no start at the gas station and I just got a big long three quarter inch bar, stuck it down on the starter solenoid and just started beating the crap out of it while he turned the key. Anyway, it's running. Let's do this. 30 minutes to go. Two miles to my house. We've got this, Kurt. I can't believe 
see if we pulled that off. That was a wild adventure. But we did it. Thanks for joining us on this adventure. Thanks for inspiring this adventure. Leave a comment below with what your favorite part was because those comments, that's the reason we do this. You're a part of this too. Welcome to the team. Cheers. We're home. <laughs> Nicely done. Good, we did it. Good, we did it. The production crew does so. <laughs> Look at I'm how far kidding. away he is. Do you think he got any of that audio? No way. I can't believe we made it all the way home. 600 miles on a car that had been parked for 20 years.